All right, so lots of people have requested a video about what happens when a Roomba encounters a mess like this. Those of you with Roombas and those of you with pets know what it means. You hear the Roomba beeping, Error 6, need help. And you walk in to find this. All right, I'm going to clean up this mess and then we'll start to disassemble this Roomba and clean it. Okay, we're ready to begin disassembly. Um, got my sink full of warm water over here. Uh, forgot to mention one thing in my earlier video, very important, uh, baby wipes. Baby wipes are an important part of this process. Um, we're gonna start by bulk removal. Guys, if you've got a weak stomach, then you might wanna wait and watch this video after you've uh, finished with lunch, um, this is a one thing you can't get from the from the video. It's just the sheer stench. Um, it, it, this is not like there's just poop in the room. This has been ground up, mushed around, um, placed into a fan. That, that there's just an aroma of of stink coming off this thing. So we're going to start with the bulk removal process, um, getting off large chunks, pieces, and getting them into the trash can. Uh, oh, looks like it's time to shut off my water. All right, guys, I'm not a professional video producer. Um, I think the total YouTube videos I've made to date is two, one of which was the previous demo on this. Um, so I apologize for the quality. Um, for those of you that are podcasters out there, um, that's not me. I'm just trying to demonstrate how to deal with this. Now you're going to have bulk material in the bin. And you go ahead and get that right to the trash can. I'm sorry you can't see me on screen with that trash can. Um, I'm going to get that right to the trash can. As you can see, I've got problems here. Uh, I've got some contents inside. This is removable and replaceable. I will probably wash that. You cannot dunk the entire bin. There's an electric fan motor in here. You will ruin it if you do. So we're going to have to be careful cleaning this piece. The bin cover or the brush cover, I should say. Uh, it comes off. This is a model 660 Roomba. Now, for those of you that have not seen it, this is the 660. Uh, the 650 is the same. Many of the, the later models are modular like this, and they run the same. Uh, we are going to use our screwdriver to remove some of the larger pieces. We don't want to totally contaminate our water and into the hot wash water that goes. Um, the brushes, I'm not sure if you guys are getting this, but you can see there's a lot of accumulation in here. This bulk material needs to be removed first. These just pop off. This is if you're if you're having a room, but you should be cleaning these pieces regularly. Now, one thing that I have not counted on here, yes, I'm going to, you're going to see me get my kitchen scissors, uh, and yes, I am going to replace them after we're done, but I forgot to get my uh, regular scissors, and I do not want to take a big gap in the video to go do that. If you're cleaning your Roomba brushes, this is the easiest way to do this. Take your scissors, in between each row of bristles, God, the smell here is awful. Um, in between each row of bristles and cut the hair. It makes it far easier to bring it out. Try not to cut the bristles. Okay, and I've cut between all the sections. <clears throat> Time to get my Roomba cleaning tool out of the drawer. And you're gonna draw that over the Roomba, pulling all of the hair out of the bristles. 
It's important that you rotate as you go down to get a good grip, otherwise it just kind of pulls it into a mass uh, through the brush instead of off the brush. <clears throat> I'm going to repeat that a couple of times. Now, some of you may, at this point, simply opt to throw these brushes away. Um, as I said earlier, I will actually be soaking this brush, soaking being a, a probably not the correct descriptive, in baking soda for an extended period of time. Now that I've cleaned that brush, uh, I'm not going to worry about all the, the typical detail fuzz cleaning. I'll get to that later. Brush goes into the soapy water, as does the cleaning tool. We will be throwing lots of stuff into the soapy water. Now I'm going to remove the fixed roller. Check my camera to make sure I'm on cam here. Sorry guys, one man band. Uh, I can't see and shoot at the same time. So I apologize if some of this video has me going off set to take care of things that would normally be taken care of by an actual production crew. Uh, again, I'm going to get as much of this off as possible. I'm not going to go through a thorough cleaning of that um, at this point because I am just bulk uh, poop removal at this point. May, may release this as one of those 4D videos so you guys can go sit in the theater and get the aroma that goes with it. Um, okay, there we go. That into the sink. These caps, I'm going to check them. If they are not impacted, I'm probably not going to throw them in the sink. They have pre-oiled bronze bearings. I will probably clean them with a toothbrush. I have my toothbrush here and take care of that later. Now, one of the things I am not going to do is I'm not going to pull out the vacuum tray assembly. It is unlikely that we have any fecal matter underneath the vacuum tray assembly, although we do have quite a bit here. So I am simply going to leave that in place. I am, however, going to remove the rotor brush. I'll let you know one little mistake. You will be tempted at some point to put this screw back here so you don't lose it. The problem is it gets tight enough and then you can't back it out without rotating the thing underneath. It becomes very difficult. So I recommend you put that in a safe place. It needs to go in the sink because it is impacted, but I'm not going to throw it in the sink right now. Uh, I want to take one of my baby wipes. I forgot to mention these in the earlier video. You probably noticed they appeared uh, in between segments. Baby wipes are essential in this process for two reasons. One, they have magic poop removing compounds. Uh, I don't know if that's true. I just made that up. But having had babies and having used them to remove many, many, many pounds of poop, they, uh, they do the trick. So I'm going to remove a lot of this bulk material here. Yes, this is a nasty operation. Um, dads out there, it's not as bad as the baby. It's bad, but it's not that bad. Uh, and into the sink it goes. I don't know if y'all can see that offset, but I have a sink full of hot water and suds. Uh, it's located right over here. And that is where all of those objects are going, where they will soak until I get to them with my toothbrush. Uh, next, I'm going to remove the cover plate. The cover plate itself has contacts on it here and here. We will need to take care that they are not, uh, oh, you can hear mama dog out back. Um, she's still a little upset at having them put outside. But um, as they say, stuff happens. I'm trying to keep this video family friendly. Okay, so this is the cover plate. Uh, it is entirely washable. The contacts will need to be cleaned separately. And it too goes into the hot water uh, where it will soak. I'm going to remove the battery and set it aside. The battery is normally, and in this case, unaffected. The front wheel, definitely packed up here. To get this out, you want to just get a good grip on the wheel and give it a tug. You will see there's material in there. Um, material is being a very nice description for dog crap. Um, also, I'm going to clean this a little separately. This wheel, I'm taking this, I'm using my thumb, I'm giving it a little push, the wheel comes out. There are bearings inside there. 
Um, it is not good for the water to get in those bearings, but at this point, it is that or dispose of the wheel itself. So I'm not going to do that. I am going to wash the wheel and I'm going to wash the wheel hub all going in the sink. At this point, I'm left with the base Roomba. As you can see, most of my problem is, is currently in the sink. Uh, not all of it, but most of it. Okay, so we're back. Um, I am now going to remove the wheels. I've already shot the sequence and found out that my camera stopped, so I'm going to now pretend to take out these three screws. One, two, three. The wheel assembly comes out. It will not be going into the sink because as you can see, it contains a motor and the electronic controls. So we're just gonna be setting that aside for later cleaning. Again, pretending one, two, three screws that hold that assembly in comes right out. As you can see, this is not as bad as the other side. Uh, that will be good. And then the sweeper motor, there are two screws, one here, another here. And that also just lifts out. It works on two force contacts, spring contacts, much like a, a little AA battery. So you need to make sure those are clean and that you're not getting those soaking wet. Uh, likewise, in the wheel well assemblies, there are plug connectors. You need to be careful of those. And at this point, I am just going to give it a gentle pat to try to remove some of that material. Being a little more sanitary than I would be. Normally I'm at my workbench. I just let things fall where they may and when they're done I pick it all up with the shop vac. Uh, I'm in the kitchen because of the lighting. Uh, and so we are a little um, a little more persnickety than we would be. So now we're going to begin with the bulk removal uh, of what's left of the assembly. The, the key elements here. We've got it in the brush tray. We're going to have to check in here these elements. Uh, we've got it in the front spindle tray. Of course, with pets, you're going to have pet hair. And we've got it along the bar. Fortunately, unlike the old 4 series, it does not seem to pack underneath this bar. So we will not be doing a complete uh, disassembly. Uh, it does, however, tend to impact the sensors. And uh, in addition to wanting to remove all that bad material, you want your sensors to work properly. So, that said, uh, we have the unit disassembled down as far as we're going to disassemble it today. When I'm using wipes, the wipes are juicy. Um, I move the unit into position such that the liquid from the wipes is going to run away and down, not into orifices. This is your dirt sensor. If you've ever noticed when your Roomba reaches uh, a spot and the blue light comes on that senses dirt, that is where that comes from. You need to make sure you get all the material out of that and uh, make sure that's clean. That's, I believe, I could not swear to this, but I believe that's an ultrasonic sensor uh, that senses object striking that piezo plate. Okay, have your trash can handy. You are going to go through lots of baby wipes and lots of paper towels. This is not the time to be cheap. And that's the bad part about this is you have to watch these little grooves. Um, the unit will function properly if you don't clean them out. It will also stink. So uh, given the fact that it's a, a moving fan, you definitely don't want uh, to leave that in there. And some of these better ones, uh, tougher spots, they get a little wet. Get your toothbrush with your soapy solution. Sometimes you may need to get a little more from your sink. Again, be cautious of where that fluid is going. Be prepared to constrain it. You are cleaning an electronic device and you don't want water just going anywhere, especially soapy water, because it will damage your circuits and shorten the life of your Roomba. By shorten, I mean today. So I'm going to clean that out. Again, we're cleaning out as many areas as we can possibly 
see and or get to. Uh, I had said earlier that I was not going to remove the sweeper tray. Uh, I see that I do have some material down here along the sides. So I am actually going to change directions there and I am going to remove the sweeper tray. There are four screws that hold the sweeper tray in place. The Model 660, the screws are captured, so you don't have to worry about losing them when you turn this upside down. Uh, never disassembled a 400 series, I have this uh, 500 series, I have disassembled a four. Those screws are not captured, you need to make sure you don't lose them. The sweeper tray assembly is electronic now is a good time I'm not going to show you this on video uh, but i'm actually going to take this outside this is the axle assembly and i'm going to gently blow out all this uh, really doesn't have a whole lot to do with this poop problem um, it has to do with just general maintenance of the unit you should be doing this regularly um, the other advantage to bringing it out is when i go to areas like this the water can drip down away from the electronics in the unit uh, i can even work it and i actually do that with the tray piece, I work it upside down um, so that the water flows in a safe direction rather than an unsafe direction. So, got a little bit here. This is fortunately not too terrible. Um, if I had to, I could break this completely down. I don't think I'm going to have to today, so I'm not going to do that. One thing I am going to do, though, is I'm going to take this place it right here and I am going to take you'll notice I have the dirty side up I'm using the clean side to, to double dip this um, and I'm going to clean that groove out I apologize if this video is not on the screen such that you can see it but I am cleaning out that thin little groove right back there that's a problem spot for this now if you're going to recycle a baby wipe like I'm doing right now uh, I recommend you go back later with a clean one and a clean paper towel and just remove everything residue um, again you're gonna have this room for many years and you want that odor to be removed I'll do that off camera so you guys this video is going to be fairly lengthy as it is so you guys don't have to be completely bored with that so I'm gonna set my tray assembly aside of that as you can see and this is a Roomba that I clean regularly um, I disassemble blowout etc and there is still if you have pets there is the buildup of pet hair always going to be a problem when you have a Roomba and when you have pets if you don't have pets it won't be quite so bad but you'll have that lint uh, I'll remove that with a uh, compressed air later out sweeper tray assembly socket be careful of that plug don't get it soggy there are lots of it's a modular device but there are lots of electronic contacts that you do not want to ruin trash with that yes I will design this roll of paper towels to the shop afterwards and no it's not going back in the kitchen <laughs> Um, it's virtually impossible not to leave poop residue everywhere so after I'm done cleaning this counter will be thoroughly clean that's actually there to remind me not to forget that because this is our kitchen counter that I'm working on today a little bit of a nasty factor there so I'll clean that out and we're going to turn it around and we're going to move on to the next the right wheel bay there is some material down in here, and we're going to, you can see, there's residue. Use your baby wipes to be your judge as to whether or not there's residue in there. Uh, brown poop on black plastic is not always the easiest thing in the world. So, I'm going to clean that out. And I'm going to go ahead and get the stepper motor well. Remember I said in the stepper well, motor well there those springs mine are not dirty um, so I am going to leave them alone those are just spring contacts like you would on a battery you can hear it there when I paint with my finger 
and our towel. I'm going to clean and dry this real well. It's pretty clean down in there. I have uh, an air compressor here at the house before I'm done. Okay, we are moving on to the next section. This would be the bin. Uh, this door, if you are careful, you just give it a little twist. You can remove that. There are little bumps on there, so don't pry hard. We don't want to break it. Um, we're going to remove the screws on this piece. There are six of them. And see, this is where I wish I had a professional cooking show and someone would come out from the back and hand me one that was already finished. Um, unfortunately, this is amateur video, and although I will probably edit the segment, we get to go through the cleaning, or the, the, the disassembly. These screws are a little odd. The well holes in them is a little large. Uh, it is difficult sometimes to get a number three in there. But the actual screw itself is a little small for a number two. Oh, this is a number one. Yeah, well, that explains the problem. I thought I had a number two. Uh, I, in fact, have a number one. So we're going to take those out. These screws, if I remember correctly, are not captive. So we are going to want to catch those. It's a little bound up right here. And this thing should come right off. If it's not coming right off, you're not all the way released. Yes, that's what I thought. The screws are not bound like the rest of the screws in the unit are. I do not want them down the drain. They are, however, and this is the difficulty in removing it. They're threaded through both elements, um, which means they don't tend to fall out or release until they're completely through. So, got those six screws, and that goes into the sink with everything else. Uh, this is the door. We'll also be sinking it. Uh, this we can't sink. Well, that we can. There's your blower motor in case you've ever wondered what it was. Uh, we could take the time to disassemble this and sink it, although it was protected by the filter, uh, which we're going to replace. So we really don't have any major uh, damage here. Pick up my six screws, set them aside with the rest of my small parts. Go in it with a towel. Yes, as you can see, it's it's quite a mess. And we are back to our baby wipes. We are again trying to get every piece of this that is coming into contact with fecal material to be cleaned. And that's not terrible. Mostly dust. That is the one good thing about the bin. The, the bin is usually shielded from checking my video. I've had some problems with my video cutting off. I'm using open camera on Android and the screen lock. Uh, wants to stop the video. Tried a couple different things there, and I'm, you, you'll notice it in the final edit. So I'm not going to clean the rest of that. It's just dust. It's not impeding the motor flow. Uh, I don't want to risk getting um, water into that pulse width motor controller. So I'm simply going to leave that dust. Like I said, uh, the motor was protected by a bin full of lint and the filter itself. See, the filter itself is not actually poop covered. Um, that is a semi paper, semi fabric filter. You can try to wash it if you want. I've had some success. I've also had some fall apart afterwards. Uh, fortunately, I have several others, and that one we are simply going to discard, and that is cleaned. Uh, we're going to set that to the side. Tools. 
my motor. This is my um, my motor for my uh, sweep brush, corner brush. I forget what the t the uh, correct ribbon name for it is. Um, so we are going to take our screwdriver. Now, this is mostly just dust and stuff. Um, if there is some some proof material in it's nasty as it seems. Baby wipes, cleaning out the well. This is the worst part right here, the gear well. Cleaning that out thoroughly. Into the sides where it got a little packed up around the edges there. Drying everything off. Like I said the baby wipes have the, um, the odor removers in them that tend to do really well with uh, fecal odor. Um, so they tend to do really well in this task. Plus there's just enough fluid in them to, uh, to clean without getting everything completely soggy. Got one small space there. I'm going to reach over here and get a little bit of water on my toothbrush. Just a little bit. Clean that area out. Um, I know some of you are thinking, oh my God, he's using a toothbrush. Um, actually, we, we recycle our, uh, our used toothbrushes when uh, they're no longer serviceable, which is for us every six months when we go to the dentist. Uh, they get thrown in the dishwasher and then thrown in the utility drawer for just this type of event. So while it may look like a brand new toothbrush, it is not, and it certainly won't be put back into service. Um, unless one of the children's makes me mad, in which case they may find themselves getting that toothbrush. Just kidding, folks. Don't call Detox. Good Lord. Uh, okay, so that is the motor assembly. It, it's ready to go back in. Um, the wheel assembly, we've got some bulk removal to do here. Uh, at this point, I've done this video slowly and in segments, so some of this has started to dry. Uh, the fact that it started to dry means that it's not quite as difficult to deal with. Um, you can flake it off. You'll notice that I'm not wearing gloves for this segment. That's because although this is nasty stuff, I'm not dealing with smearing and wiping and things like that like I was earlier. Um, it has become a solid. Now this is why I said you needed this little flathead screwdriver. You're going to need to go into each one of these little tire treads and scrape that out. Um, unfortunately, that the way it is attached to the gear assembly, there is no good way to remove that tire from the, the, the wheel and clean it uh, effectively without potentially causing damage. Um, so we're going to do this the hard way. Um, some of you may choose to simply replace this whole wheel assembly, and that is certainly an option. It's not a cheap option, but it is an option. And to be frank, if your budget allows you to do that, um, I am not going to begrudge you not cleaning this up. Um, you know, if the wheel assemblies were in my disposable budget, they would be exposed when this happens. Okay, so the, the rest of this we're going to have to clean up with a toothbrush. Um, but first things first, when we clean it up, we need to keep the motor and the electronics up. So when I go to clean, I'm going to do this over the sink later. Uh, I'm going to do it over here as a demonstration though. Uh, I'm going to be cleaning like this. Now I'll be using a bit more water when I'm in the sink. Um, not going to get good video from where I'm at standing over the sink. So I'm going to clean each of these treads out and I'm, you can see the water dripping down. I'm deliberately keeping the water moving away from the electronics. Um, when I get to do this on the other side, I'll be working in this fashion because I want my motor and my electronics uphill and my drippings to go downhill. 
I'm going to cheat on this a little bit, and I will do a lot of this off camera so you don't have to see me sitting through all uh, 100 little treads, but that is what we're going to do. We're going to clean each of them. And then the next step, which you will see in my other video, uh, but that video is not uh, using a dirty wheel. It's using a clean wheel. I'm taking this single ply baby wipe. All right, so we're taking this single ply baby wipe. We're allowing the treads to catch it. And we're rotating it through. See, we're rotating through the wheel well. I'm going to open this up. It won't do quite as good of a job when I do that. But I'm allowing it to catch both sides, particularly behind. I can wipe this out directly later, clean it with a toothbrush. But behind in that wheel well, as you can see, we've got to clean the interior of that wheel well out. I'm going to turn this dirty part out, away from the wheel. I'm going to put a clean part in, allowing it to overlap because I do want a little bit of pressure inside that wheel well from the water, not a lot. I'm not forcing this. I'm simply wiping the interior of that well. That is almost clean. I'm going to not allow that to recycle. Don't go too fast, guys. This is geared. You'll hear the gears moving. You don't want to hear them whining and struggling. Go slow. Walk it through. I got too much of a wad there. I'm actually having to force that. You can see the liquid being squeezed out. I'm not forcing hard, though. I'm giving a little more pressure. Force is a bad word. I'm giving a little more pressure than I like. Um, but you can see now that is clean. So the wheel well in behind there is clean. Take these. Trash the well. And I'm going to clean up. Now, like I said, I've not completely cleaned this wheel. I will be doing the rest of that off camera. Uh, but I did want you to see how we clean the inside portion of that wheel well. And again, we're inspecting in that groove. I caught it on an earlier video. I don't know if it showed up because I had a, a video issue. But I'm actually, when I find little tidbits in there, I'm cleaning them out all the way around. So I'm getting that entire tire. And this one is almost ready to go. I've got to clean the tire treads. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. I said I was going to do that off camera. I think I'm going to do a little bit of that on camera uh, at this point. So, coming around, praying that you can see me because I can't see the camera. Doing a little bit of water, holding my wheel up so that the drippings are away from the electronics. And I'm cleaning this set of treads. I'm working from underneath and down. I want all my drippings to go away from the electronics. I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to take a towel, which is now off screen, and I'm going to clean that and dry it. I've already cleaned it and dry it. I'm going to rotate it to the next section. I'm going to repeat. And I'm getting just enough water to do the job. There's not a whole lot of water running anywhere in any direction. Cleaning those treads with this old toothbrush. Again, I'm drying. Now remember, guys, even if your dog is healthy, you are dealing with a lot of feces and feces overspray. You can see some of it here. Um, afterwards, this is just generic store brand bleach spray, but we will be spraying down um, the last thing you want, on top of having your living room destroyed by the Roomba versus Poopzilla, is to catch you a nice case of norovirus from cleaning in the kitchen. I do normally do this at my workbench outside. I have an outdoor sink that I work with. Uh, it's just an old wash sink that I hook up to the garden hose uh, for cleaning auto parts and things of that nature. But because of the lighting, I am going to have to work inside to shoot this video. So we're almost all the way done here. I'm coming around, getting about a quarter of a tread of each go. Just scrubbing it like I'm cleaning out some teeth. And there we go. That's clean all the way around. Clean the wheel well. This, I'm not going to repeat that on the second one. This is ready for reassembly. Um, the other one, I actually forgot what it looked like. It still has not been cleaned. Now, this is how bad it can get, folks, and we will have an 
material impacted not only under the tread, but in the wheel well assembly. This will take some time. Uh, I'm not going to do that on camera because that would be an hour to do all this. So, well, not an hour. It'll take me 15 minutes to do that. Um, just make sure you clean the entire thing. Okay, everybody. Um, so I was cleaning the wheel. The other wheel, I've gotten the, the majority of the treads done, and I went to clean the wheel well out. I always clean that out last. And you can see this is the type of, of trouble you can be dealing with in the back there. And when you get to that level, uh, guys, don't don't be recycling these, these wipes. Uh, you need to clean in both directions with the wipes until you're coming clean. Now you can see there's a tremendous amount of difference in that first and that second one. I've forgotten about the fact that, that wheel well is still going to be uh, moist in the back and I am working without my gloves. Um, so my, my loss, uh, but we're going to get the video. The show must go on, right? Um, as you can see, I'm now starting to get the vast majority of that clean. There's still some in there uh, that's going to have to be taken care of. I'm going to do a polish with this and do a final with a clean um, in order to get all of that material out. I hope that's on camera. I think I was just off camera. I apologize if I was. Um, but as you can see, we've went from in just three rotations from dark brown solids to just a little bit of a stain. Uh, at this point, I'm starting to build up some fluids, some, some soap and some water. Um, those are bad for my motor assembly. I don't want them floating around in there. So I am going to repeat the process with a paper towel and get some of that moisture out of there. Paper towel is clean. So, oops, got caught up in again. Paper towel is clean. My treads are not quite finished. Um, I will go back and finish that off camera. Uh, but I did want to show you that uh, when in, in this process, you need to remember the back of that wheel well. Uh, also, I don't know if you guys are catching this on video, but if you will look right here, there is hiding on the inside some material. You need to watch for that. Again, we want to remove everything from this. Now, if this becomes a problem, um, I will actually get in here with a dental pick and remove the last of the material. Actually, I think, okay, well, there you go. That is actually a piece of baby wipe that was torn off. Uh, or Possibly it's dog lint that was, uh, was, was stained in the process. That's not um, just ordinary dog poop. So I'm going to continue this off camera, and uh, we will get towards uh, cleaning the rest here in a moment. Okay, before we move on to the stuff that's in the sink, I wanted to take a moment and review where we're at. Uh, we removed our battery. So we didn't have any power to it while we were cleaning with fluids. We removed our dustbin cleaned, ready to be reinstalled. I'm actually getting clean the top. That really doesn't have anything to do with the poop problem we're having today. Uh, but while I've got it all apart, I went to clean it. We have removed our rollers and cleaned our end caps. Those end caps I cleaned uh, with an air compressor. Air compressor is a wonderful thing to have if you've got a room that makes maintenance much easier. Um, I'm going to replace the dust catcher in there, but I did want to show you I took this out uh, I rinsed it off with a baby wipe and a little, little fresh water, and I blew it out with an air compressor, and that is what we look like now. Um, it's actually serviceable, but it has a bit of an odor to it, so I'm going to discard it. it they're cheap uh, and easy to replace. Our sweeper motor, completely cleaned, ready to go, ready to reassemble. Uh, our dust tray, cleaned out. Still, oh, still a little bit of dust in here. And get that out real quick. Again, that, that is not a part of our problem today. That's just general maintenance item. Uh, and last but not least, and I seem to have left them off camera, I apologize, um, the wheels. You guys saw the wheels earlier. You saw the condition the wheels were in. These are the same wheels. I did not replace them. They've merely been cleaned, thoroughly cleaned top to bottom. Um, this is the left wheel, which is the one that was so terribly impacted earlier. Uh, you've probably seen it most recently in the video. And as you can see, 
uh, we're clean and ready to reinstall there. So with that said, I'm going to uh, pause the video for a moment and we will go back to the sink. All right, here we are at the sink. No doubt if you guys can see in the sink, the brown water, most of this is from cleaning the wheel earlier. I'm not going to worry about this. This is, this is where I'm going to remove material, then I'm going to rinse, and then I'm going to set it aside uh, to dry. Get a little rearranging. These, like I said, will be retired from service. This is our brush cover. Uh, most of the material is gone. We're going to use our toothbrush to get the remainder of that off. This is again a soapy water solution. I'm not sure if you're seeing. This is coming really clean with just soap and water. Those brown stains in the end are actually normal. Um, I, unlike some people, do put just a dab of grease uh, in where my bearing ray sits. Okay, so we've cleaned this up. We've removed material it's been soaking most of the material was removed to begin with uh, now we're going to give that a warm water rinse not hot not cold just warm see some gook that's that's kind of body oils and things like that just human activity in the area and get that off to the side to dry the brushes not a whole lot to that rinse except for to get off the dirty water. You can see most of what you see in that sink is actually not uh, fecal material. It is dust. Uh, Roomba spent a great deal of time gathering dust. And uh, they do need to be cleaned periodically. I hope you're maintaining your Roomba on a regular basis. If you're not, um, you need to be going through the process that I went through, minus the deep disassembly. Uh, all of your brushes need to be removed and cleaned. The lint needs to be removed. Um, just a little water there. Sorry. Multitasking. Um, the lint needs to be removed. The excess hair. You're only dealing with a little 10-watt motor in the Roomba. Um, excess hair dragging on the rollers creates unnecessary drag force and that little motor uh, a 20% reduction in 10 watts is, is a lot uh, in terms of performance so you need to be cleaning these regularly disassembling them this like I said will I will go to my spare brush this will get placed in the baking soda bag and it will stay for some time these brushes do absorb and hold odor um, and quite frankly I, it just stinks if it's I, it won't after a couple of months in baking soda, but it does now. So, setting that aside, uh, going with the smaller pieces first. This is our vent cover. This really didn't have uh, any fecal material on it. So, I'm just going to rinse it. It's just basically clean. This is our solid brush. Uh, and I'm going to. should have trimmed this hair off earlier. Yeah, I think this is. Probably going to go down on YouTube as one of the world's grossest videos. Uh, but I'm going to clean that off, removing all the dust and material and crap and garbage and hair. Thankfully, my toothbrush is not going to be part of this. And then with my screwdriver, we are just removing the bound up hair. Um, I know you're looking at this and you're thinking, my God, our house is nasty. Actually, our house is hardwood floors and really clean. Um, it's just that Roomba finds every single stray hair, lint, fuzz, uh, and it picks it up and it wraps it around these rolls. And so what you end up with is something that resembles the drain in a public shower. <laughs> Our dogs are actually short hair, and uh, oops, get a little warm there. Our dogs are actually short hair. Most of what you see there is fibers on the couches and things like that. Although there's a fair amount of human hair in there as well. Not mine, because you saw me earlier in the video. My hair's an eighth of an inch long. All right, um, cleaning 
tool. Just going to give it a quick rinse and a quick once over with the toothbrush to make sure. It is a clean tool. She's clean and nasty brush, so it's not like it needs to be super clean. Uh, this is our door. As you can see, you saw the material earlier. Most of it is gone. Uh, I'm going to give it a little scrub to knock off any remaining. Rinse. Off the clean it goes. This was our bottom clear dust pen. I'm not sure how that's going to show up on camera. It is clean, it is wet, and it is floating over a puddle, puddle of water. Um, so I can't see the other side of that camera. This may very well be invisible to you. If it is, I'll take it out and post edit and just say a little something about that. Uh, our ball from our front wheel. That center is always going to be dirty. So, but the point is, all the material is removed. The wheel is free flowing. It spins like it's supposed to. It's got a little drag. I'll probably put a little dollop of, uh, of lighter wheel in there to oil that back up. Uh, the front wheel assembly is also clean. Guys, this has been soaking in the sink here for about three hours. So, uh, when you see it on the video, it may be just appear to be a very short period of time. I did a rather lengthy soak on this to free it up. The brush, those of you that saw the brush earlier, uh, the brush has quite a bit of impaction in it. This will also go into the baking soda bag. It stinks uh, and it will need to soak in, or, or store in baking soda for a long time before it removes the odor. Um, that black at the root is not equal material. These things tend to stain at that location from dust and other debris. Um, so as long as they're not broken, they are intended as a duster, so I can put that back into service. Uh, once it has been deodorized, I have a spare. And last but not least, this is Hoping you can see this, that the faucets are not too far on the limb. We'll take that off so we can move it out of the way. This was our cover. Uh, our cover has some residue in some places. Uh, this is a normal place to clean in your service location. It will get a, a black sticky buildup from oils and things of that nature. You want to clean that out. Obviously the treads, uh, your foot, the wheel well will be packed up there. Contacts. Need to get those holes filled. They will often have material left in them. Just get the entire surface good. Flip it over. Get a quick rinse. And we're going to see. I'm not seeing any material left. So this is clean. Uh, that good soak did a good job. Remember your screws are captive on the Model 660. So those are not going to cause you any problems. I'll give it a rinse. Right now I'm just removing any last nasty fluids out of that soaking sink, removing your soap, and it goes off to the drying rack. Okay folks, here we go. Reassembly. All the parts have been cleaned, they're dried, they're laid out here, and they're ready to begin reassembly. I'm going to put this together and uh, so you can see how it all goes back. First, this part out of the way. This is the dust bin. Doesn't need to go first. It takes up a large space on my counter. And so we're going to do that. Um, in the video at this point, we'll be fast forwarding because I'm not going to make you sit through six screws. And just like that, the six screws are completed. We're going to take our brush, we're going to reapply our large bearing. We're going to take our solid brush, reapply our small bearing. We're going to take our front wheel. The wheel is keyed, has a little slot, and it just snaps into place. It should spin just fine. We're going to put that, our door, is back on. Again, remember there's little pins, a little gentle pressure. Don't break it. There's your pin door. And that pretty much is it for 
the non-assembly portion or, or the non-tool portion. So next we're going to go back in with our beater bar tray. Helps if we put that in facing correctly. The only tool we use is the number two Phillips. Um, in this case, number one Phillips. And the flathead is simply there because I had it out earlier for the cleaning. All the way in. And all the way in. And that one's all the way in. Ooh, that one's stripped, but it's solid. Three are in there. Left wheel assembly. that. My arm's in the way. Looks like my arm is in the way. Three screws for that. Connector is a plug-in connector, so you don't have to do anything there. Just plug it back in and screw it in place. Right wheel assembly. Snap it into place. Make sure that actuates properly. It's sticky there. And three screws there. Three screws. Okay, that's both the wheel assemblies. The brush bars go in the way they came. This end is keyed, slides in, sets into place. This end is also keyed. Sets into place. You've got to find a little hole. It's a square hole. Sets into place. You're done there. Brush guy snaps into place up here. Like that. Locks into place. Dust bin. Put that in later. Dust bin goes into place like this. Okay. Everything's good to go down here. Almost forgot, when reassembling your dustbin, this is important whether you're cleaning it or whether you're not cleaning it. Be sure to include your motor cover. You don't want your motor getting clogged up with dust. That little dustbin motor is not very powerful and it needs to spin freely. Okay, that's good. Front wheel assembly. It just pops into place. Get a little push. You can hear it click. This is the uh, sweeper bar. Two contacts. It only fits in place one, uh, fits in one way. Uh, you will need to push it down with your finger and hold it while you screw it down. Otherwise, uh, you'll have to bite those screws on the way down. And battery. When it goes one way, it's keyed. It goes. And she's live. And. Bottom plate cover, four screws. We're just snugging all these up, no power tools. As you can see, it's really not that complicated. It goes rather slow when I'm trying to take everything apart and uh, remove poop at the same time. This has a hex head on it, it goes on one way. Last screw. This is why I was telling you in the first video you don't put this back until you're ready because you do need to hang on to that to keep the shaft from spinning or it will spin on you. That's easy to get a screw into and hard to get it out of. Um, that is the completed, cleaned Roomba 660.